Today on the bench is a Bell & Howell Model 34 oscilloscope. In this video, I will show you what I did to repair a Bell & Howell Model 34 oscilloscope with a non-functioning display. When I received this oscilloscope, it had something rattling around inside of its case. Once I removed the cover, I discovered that the curved CRT hold-down bracket was floating around inside the case. In this picture, you can see the bracket I am referring to. I was very surprised that the CRT did not get broken during shipping. After remounting the CRT bracket to properly secure the CRT, I proceeded to see if the oscilloscope would power up. Using an incandescent light bulb in series with the oscilloscope, I applied power to the oscilloscope and determined that there was no short circuits that could damage the chassis power transformer. This was also the time when I discovered the oscilloscope did not produce a horizontal trace on its CRT. I did notice that the CRT filament was glowing. Referring to the schematic, I focused in on the high voltage bias circuitry for the CRT. On the transformer output winding responsible for the CRT high voltage, there is connected a 1V2 vacuum tube designated as V8. This 1V tube is a half wave rectifier tube. Shown here is the data sheet for the tube. Using a tube tester, I discovered that this tube had very low emissions. I then looked at the pi filter on the output of the tube. Measuring across the first capacitor, C30, I discovered that it was shorted. Proceeding to the second capacitor, C31, I discovered that it was also shorted. I then measured the 220K ohm resistor, R63 and determined that it was way out of tolerance. It actually measured 448 K ohms. Shown in this image are the location of the bad components. I then proceeded to replace the C30 and C31 capacitors and the R63 resistor. I also replaced the 1V2 vacuum tube with a new old stock one. Shown in this image are all the components that were replaced. After replacing all these components, I took a resistance measurement across the output of the Pi filter. There were no more shorts found on the high voltage bias circuitry. I then powered up the oscilloscope directly from the AC outlet. The CRT had a dot in the center of the screen and then became a horizontal trace after the tubes warmed up. Here you can see the trace fill the entire width of the screen. If you look closely at the face of the oscilloscope between the red binding posts, you can see that a previous owner drilled two holes in the faceplate. Perhaps I will add a pilot light in one of those holes. If you like this content, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button.